about 30 years, initially through friends and business acquaintances, and then eventually I hired the guy. Hey, I'm Wayne Livingston, and uh, we're here to say goodbye to Lloyd, which we did a year and a half ago, technically, but officially today. Best customer service guy on the planet. True. He had the patience of a saint. He would handhold people, you know, and walk them through everything, and spend so much time on the phone with them. I mean, occasionally I'd hear this like boom, you know, <laughs> what the fuck? you know, like <laughs> there were a few of those customers. You know, but the first time I ever spoke to Lloyd was a few years before I worked here. I called up to ask a question and spoke with him on the phone for a few minutes and thought, wow, this guy's really good at what he does. And he had that great voice. You know, he, he was like, a, could have been in broadcasting. So then I got the job here, uh, you know, a few years later and sat next to him for 10 years. So we had a lot of great conversations, you know, about gear, man, about politics, about life, all kinds of stuff. And man, what can I say? It's just, lost your brother and you know he just taught me a lot and uh, was just a great guy to work with and I don't know how many people know this but you know when we moved to Clifton in 2002 Lloyd would take two trains a Port Authority bus and walk a half a mile to get to the company and I didn't think he would last but he did and the good news was is that he drove home with me every night. So I would drop him off at 72nd and West End Avenue and he would go off to the subway to go home. And we had many, many good moments in the car. You know, we really got to know each other so well. And, you know, we used to joke about being friends, you know, like I used to say, should we be friends on Facebook? And he'd be like, he'd look at me and I'd look at him and we'd both go, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we were, we were friends, and I got to know so much about him. He was very, you know, close to the vast about his personal life, but he did open up to me, which meant so much because I knew he wasn't the kind of guy that, you know, just talks a lot about himself. And he was really an amazing person. He was, he was generous. He was loyal. He was, um, he was so sweet. He loved animals. He loved children. I mean, he rescued a pigeon. This little, disgusting looking little <laughs> pigeon, you know? And he kept it in his bathtub. <coughs> and there were pictures, he posted pictures on Facebook. But he loved cats, he loved dogs, and he loved his birds, I don't know. But one of the things that we most enjoyed was how much he loved animals. We had a cat, Juliet, who adored Lloyd. When Lloyd would stay at our house, she she normally slept outside during the summer, and he was usually there when the weather was warm. But she would sleep with him, and after he left, we were too lazy at first to, to wash the sheets and take the bedding off, so we just left her there until we could. And we, we were looking for Juliet, and we would find her asleep on his pillow. Because she, 
she just loved him so much. We have another story about a friend of ours that has a very problematic rescue dog. She's been with a few people. So we just said, well, we say to all people, don't look at the dog, don't touch the dog, don't do anything, just ignore the dog. And we go in, and Lloyd said, hi, dog's name's Bailey, hi, Bailey. And she stopped and looked at him. And we sat down in our friend's dining room table and had drinks. And within minutes, Bailey came over. Laid her head on his lap. <laughs> it just was in bliss. We just talked about it the other day, how the dog's mom said she had never seen that happen ever. Even to this day, it's like people just knew him. Animals knew he was wonderful. We should make humans know how wonderful he was. And going out at the end of the NAM show, as I said to you, Godfrey, you know, going out at the end of the NAM show was the perfect way for Lloyd to go. Because he got to see everybody. He loved the NAM shows. He never said that out loud, but I know he did. And of course, you know, he was not big on hugs. And I was allowed to hug him twice a year, <laughs> which was on his birthday and at the end of a NAMM show. And I regret that I didn't get to hug him on that last NAMM show. He was definitely more than, his presence was bigger than it was over the phone. The guy was a great dude, and he actually let me hug him, which I hear is quite a rare thing. I've been a friend of Lloyd since probably around 1995, and I met him uh, back then when I was fortunate enough to start working with John Entwistle, the bass player from The Who, who was actually a Tech 21 in Dorsey. When we got to the gig, uh, there was no amp for me. And uh, Lloyd came over and uh, he said, hey, you're the guitar player? Yes, sir. Um, we're gonna let you play through one of these rack mount preamps and we'll put it through the PA system and we'll send you a signal back through your monitor wedge. Is that good? And of course I was a little freaked out by that. <laughs> and I went, oh, I guess, what can I say? You know, and then he went, okay, well, let's work for a couple of, you know, let's work, let's work for a while and see if we can get you a good sound. And we went over to the unit and, you know, the first preset is a bypass preset that's just zero, zero in the digital readout. And the very first preset after that is zero one, which is a Marshall Plexi. And they hit that next preamp uh, um, preset, and I hit a couple of power chords, and I went, "That's good." <laughs> and Lloyd said, "You're going to be easy to work with, I can tell." <laughs> We're here celebrating our friend Lloyd, who was a special person. Of course, we all—that's why we're here, uh, and we miss people because we're selfish. <laughs> He's in a better place, I would imagine, and uh, the luckiest way for a person to go is like that, which is what happened with Lloyd, which no one deserved it better than him, to just have an easy way, uh, an easy, sweet and short and sweet kind of thing. And But we miss him here. We're the ones who are suffering without him, you know. There are several people in my life, like John Entwistle and Lloyd, who I miss in my life every day. So we're the ones left behind to suffer while they're moving on to a better situation. And that's all I can say is any kind of consolation for us all to be happy for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. We, of course, like many people at the NAMM shows, he was like, you know, we, at least far the bass players stop the game. And if you know me so far, you'll get in on that joke. But Lloyd was a great guy with a terrific sense of humor. He was a legend in his neighborhood in Coney Island area in Brooklyn. Yeah, he's been a Coney Island native. I mean, he was born and raised in Coney Island his whole life, you know. Uh, Lloyd and I were our oldest friends. We met when we were seven years old, Brighton Beach, selling comic books. Uh, 
on the corner of Franklin Chapel, his mom started talking to my mom. I started talking to him. We were talking about Superman and Batman. And uh, we started hanging out at each other's houses, trading comics. And he was uh, very ahead of me in school. We were in the same class, but we were in the same school. And uh, we started having a lot in common. We started playing music together. We were in both in our first bands together, and we both pursued music in our ways, and uh, we both worked in Catskills. I was playing in a show band, and he was working the lights with Brickman. We used to hang out on our days our, our heyday was the early 70s. We had a lot of adventures together, did a lot of drugs together. <laughs> um, we had a blast. I'll just bore you with one anecdote from those times. For some reason in February of 1973, I got it into my head to hitchhike to Buffalo. Because I, I was really, I wanted to get laid. <laughs> and there was this girl I knew up there, and I got Lloyd to come with me. We had hitched around before in the past, so we took a, we, we, the usual routine was we took a, a, a raw loaf of Pillsbury chocolate chip cookie dough to get us through. And uh, we got as far as this dark road, halfway up to Buffalo on a freezing February night. And, and we're standing in the dark, no cars, it's fucking freezing. This car pulls up, angelic car, filled with these rather large nurses. Two in the front, three in the back. They were, they were hefty gals. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's nothing better than to cram into a car of hefty gals when you're fucking frozen. <laughs> and it took us all the way to Boston. It was great. I didn't get late, but we got all the way to Boston. We did many dinners and trade shows together. Uh, one of the funnest ones was Nashville, um, where Lloyd changed his name to Floyd because he was in Nashville, <laughs> and uh, we went out to dinner to a steakhouse, and they had something on the menu called rooster fries. We're like, what are rooster fries? And it turns out it's uh, part of the rooster that I didn't want to eat, but Lloyd's like, oh, I'll try those. I'm like, really? <laughs> we bought an amp in that crapped out at a show, and gave it to Lloyd, and Lloyd, uh, I went and said hi to Dale and John and some other people, and then uh, came back, and Lloyd's like, Jerry, it was just the fuse. So I was completely embarrassed, because that's the thing you're supposed to check first. And I called Lloyd up, and I said, Lloyd, I, my, my pedal is just making a funny noise, I don't know what to do, but I need it for this gig, I really do it. He said, send it over, I'll take care of it right away. They overnighted it to him. Um, about, a, about a day or so later, Lloyd called me up, and he says, Hey Rory, uh, your pedal? I said, yeah. Did you ever think of changing the battery? No, uh, actually I didn't. <laughs> so, I was like, uh, okay. He says, yeah, then. so he changed the battery for me. He cleaned it up, he put it in a brand new box, and he overnighted it to me, and I had it immediately. Um, and I always appreciated that from, the, uh, from Lloyd. Lloyd changed the views for me, and I said, Lloyd, thank you so much. I said, I'll be back next week with a case of Corona for you. And he said, Jerry, don't bring the case of Corona until after the NAM show, because otherwise everybody's going to drink it on me. I said, okay, I'll see you after the NAM show. And uh, I didn't get to see Lloyd again. So. Uh, Somebody would mention your name and I'd go, oh man, he's a sweetheart. 
I would say that about home. If someone said, you know, Lloyd, I said, Lloyd's a sweet man. And it's a very small number of people I would say that about, honestly. And uh, he's one of them. Lloyd, wherever you are, well, thank you about you. Cheers, Lloyd. Love you and I miss you. Keep you in our hearts forever. I happened to bring up a conversation that I was starting a new job the very next day. And they asked where, and I said, a place called 1021. And they both looked at each other and turned white. Like, no way. Our best friend in the world, Lloyd, works at 1021. So I started the next day, and uh, at the party, I had brought um, bread pudding to the party. seen him so I didn't know who to look for, I didn't know what to expect. But I'm standing at the sink, I'm washing my hands and I feel a, a presence behind me. And someone gets it in my ear and whispers, so who do I have to kill to get some more of that bread pudding? And I turn around and it was Lloyd. And uh, because of his relationship with Alan and Colette, and because I was family with Alan and Colette, I had an in with Lloyd, and um, we talked about gear, we talked about food, and uh, he was a great guy. And what more do you want out of this life than to leave your mark? And Lloyd left his mark, be it for the people that have known him all of his life, or someone like me that only knew him for a couple of years. He left his mark. He was one in a million, and I'll miss him. Hey Lloyd, we miss you terribly. I miss you terribly. Uh, thank you for all the things that you've taught me in our friendship over these past years working together. Uh, one most important thing is never throw anything away. And as you see, I've uh, created a nice little homage to you. <laughs> not, as, not as great as yours was, but I'm getting there. So thank you, Lloyd. I miss you. Take care. We miss you. And we will keep your flame lit. Keep you in our hearts. Always. And we promise we are going to name a cat after you. And uh, we have one in the way. Even if it's a girl. In my past, I was bowled over um, by, the, by the outpouring of affection on, online, on Facebook. I couldn't believe it. Hundreds, hundreds of people. Paying tribute to Lloyd. It, it just knocked, knocked the shit out of you. I just couldn't believe it. And I thought, fuck, when I go, I'm not gonna get anything <laughs> like that. So I had the idea of starting a service. You sign up with them. When you go, this service goes into action, flooding Facebook and whatever else <laughs> with, with good words about it. And don't, don't rip this idea off. I'm going to call it Rest in Praise. <laughs> I want to say, Lloyd, I love you. You are a missed. You are a wonderful man and musician. And greetings and love to you in the spirit world. Cheers. I called Dale during the day at her office, and Lloyd would invariably more often than not answer the phone. And Lloyd and I would talk for a long time, a half hour, 45 minutes, and then finally I'd remember why I called, and it was to, to say hi to Dale. He said, oh yeah, I'll get you in the toll bar, I'll be right back. Thanks, Lloyd. Remember, this has been great. Lloyd was always known for his curmudgeonly personality, you know, at that surface. You know, he always loved where he was and what he was doing, you know, and, you know, maybe everything wasn't perfect, you know, on his, in his mind, in his personal life, you know, you never know, but again, he didn't, you know, he didn't talk about that much, you know, but just from the perspective of my experiences with him and the people that he's touched in life, uh, you know that he was where he was supposed to be. He really loved what he did. He made a really great impression on me. He made a big difference in my experience every time I saw him at either NAMM shows on the street at Tech 21. I have a funny story where we were doing a TV uh, movie shoot in Coney Island 
And uh, he wasn't very active on Facebook, very vocal on Facebook, put it that way. But we were doing a movie shoot, and uh, and I put it out there that we needed people to uh, to do a uh, you know to be part of the crowd. So I'm standing there with some of the actors, and uh, I get a tap on the shoulder. It's Lloyd. <laughs> So just unexpectedly, he didn't say he was coming or anything, but he was there with a smile on his face, and it was just a great memory of him. We love you, we definitely miss you, and uh, the music world won't be the same without you. There are a million anecdotes, I will not say any, it's been a lifetime of friendship. We never went by that we didn't touch your face. And uh, his departing was yeah. a tremendous shock to all of us. And me especially, I feel I still haven't gotten over The day hasn't really gotten by when I was not waiting for a phone call or saying, I got to wish for it to go out. It's wonderful that even at this point, how it's been a while now, none of us here have forgotten. And, and kept keeping this going forward to make sure that we were able to celebrate his life. And I'm very appreciative to all the effort that everybody's made. He's very grateful to be here. Thanks. Lloyd, I'm sitting here at your memorial a few years after you passed. Um, it's very hard to believe that you're gone. Um, I've been the unofficial official ambassador for Tech 21 for quite a few years, and now I'm actually official in that I work for Tech 21, except sadly you're not there. Um, I see where your desk was, and um, I wasn't even with you. But thankfully, I shared some time with you um, in the car, going to shows, at different events, and I'm happy that I was able to do that because Lloyd was really a good guy and he always made me feel comfortable. He always had something about music to talk about. Um, I'm thinking about, which is really sad, is I remember the, the night of Ben, um, the Sunday night. We all had dinner at the Tech 21 table and uh, we all got up to leave, and that was the night to break down the booth. And you and I alone walked from the restaurant in the hotel toward the convention center and you said goodnight to me and you walked out the side door and I walked toward the elevator and walked to my room and that was the last time I spoke to you and who would have thought that you would have been gone that evening and it's just really hard to think about that but I'm glad I got to share that last night with you in Mendoza. Like we had that chat on the corridor going to the elevator. And I find comfort in it. So anyway, everybody had a great time in your memorial. You were there in spirit. Sydney you brought your ashes. I think everybody who's had any sort of interaction with Lloyd feels like they probably could have known him forever as well. You know, I, I got to see meet Lloyd after talking to him on the phone many, many times before I had any affiliation at NAM for two years in a row. Yeah, the short period of time that I actually got to know Lloyd will stay with me for a very long period. And I just remember meeting Lloyd and feeling like I knew him my whole life. He made me feel like he was part of my family and welcomed us into this, you know, beautiful reunion for our, you know, mutual friend and to be here tonight with my best friend who I haven't seen in five years and in memory of him is just a blessing um, to meet all of the people that loved him and that his memory will be carried on forever. We love you, Lloyd. Peace. Lloyd for many, many years. I met him through Joe Berger and <clears throat> celebrated uh, many good times at NAM. And um, I would always take our breaks during the show outside in the, in the back area where everyone would go for a little smoke. This last show, unfortunately, in the company I was with, I was in the booth for the entire time and I could not leave. I had fully intended to come see Lloyd uh, during the breakdown, 
So, long story short, is I unfortunately did not get to see Bowie at the last day, which I keep doing. Well, and I've done the work for Tech 21 since the company started back in 1989, and Lloyd was hired um, as the company grew. And I couldn't always find Dale or Andrew if I needed to speak to them, so Lloyd would do his best to keep me occupied until I got to the phone. And we used to talk quite a bit. And my biggest regret is one, in one of our conversations, I mentioned to him that I have an original electro harmonics big muff from around 1971 or something like that. And it wasn't working any longer. So he said, well, send it to me and I'll fix it for you. And I never did. And so now I still have that big muff somewhere in my closet of old junk and uh, it remains unusable. But uh, that was Lloyd. He would always be looking for a way to find a solution to whatever the problem was. He was a great guy. And we all miss you, man. So be well wherever your soul has gone to. I've known Lloyd probably about 15 years, something like that. And uh, I met him at Tech 21, of course, like everyone. Uh, found that we knew a lot of people in common and uh, kind of kept in contact over the years. So we see him every year in Naples. Uh, we loved him. He was a great guy. Uh, so we miss him. Uh, the world's not the same without Lloyd. I live in Arizona. And Lloyd would come and visit my family every year after Nam. Um, and then he'd also make sure he made a trip to Arizona for Halloween and my, and my daughter's birthday. Um, Lloyd, Uncle Lloyd, Uncle Boyd, we miss you terribly. I wish you were here for me to give you a big giant hug today. But I've been thinking about you so much the last week. And I went down to Mexico last week and I thought about you a bunch and I saw your sign in Swartz Road up there in Ajo, Arizona. And you were just everywhere and we miss you and we love you. And Liv and Donovan miss you and love you. And Mark sends his love as well. Thank you for being you. Thank you for loving me and my family like you did. I can't wait to see you again one day. Love you, Lloyd, forever and ever and always and always, I promise. Every so often, Lloyd would just show up at my store and, uh, you know, it was a clubhouse. A lot of people showed up there, but it was always a joy to see Lloyd because <laughs> he was such a bright and shining face and, and we loved him. We, we all miss him terribly. Um, I was informed of Lloyd's passing by my son, who has been in the music business a whole other part than I'm in. Uh, and uh, for several years, I had somehow become in charge of one evening's dinner at a Thai restaurant. There would be 30 or 40 people there. And Lloyd would somehow manage to show up. And um, after the show, uh, my son was back in New York. And um, I think it must have been him that had told me that Lloyd passed. But I do recall him telling me that he had seen Lloyd. He said, I saw him just the night before. He passed away. He was at our dinner. And uh, my son Ben said he was really glad to have seen Lloyd that evening as well. And I'm sorry I missed him at the end, but uh, having sort of dropped out of that whole end of the business um, several years ago after closing the walking store part of my business. So I miss a lot of people. Lloyd is one who I really miss him. I was fortunate enough to get Lloyd in the divorce. Uh, I dated a guy years and years and years ago, I was friends with him. And after several tumultuous years, when we broke up, I said, you can have all your friends back, except for Lloyd. Lloyd wrote me what might possibly be the best love letter that I've ever gotten. Years and years and years ago. And it wasn't like a love letter like that, but it was just, it was a letter of love. And he was telling me how much he appreciated and loved our friendship. I was getting ready to leave New York in, 
and he was worried he might never see me again, and he was telling me how much he enjoyed our love and our friendship, and, and he, he listed all the things he hoped that we would do one day. At the end, it said, I want to dance with you at your wedding. And I was a kid back then, and it never dawned on me that I'd have a wedding one day, and the idea of him being there was just delightful. And by the way, he never got married, so. <laughs> I moved to Arizona, and weirdly, on a, on a whim, Lloyd came to visit me after NAM, and the first year it was like for like three days, and then the next year it was like for four days, and then 17 years later we had this ridiculous, incredible, annual event where he would come every year. Like I, I built him up I built him an apartment in my backyard and called it Lloyd's apartment because I loved him so much and I wanted him to have a place in my home and in my heart. There are no there's no way to there's no way to express how much I love him. And there's no way to express how much I miss him. He was magical. He was weird. He was quirky. He was hard. He was not an easy man to love. But it was so easy. It was so easy to get out inside. And that's the thing with a like, When you're in the inside, you're in the inside. And there's no getting out. There's no way out. He was my family. He was my family. And I get Lloyd. I get Lloyd. We love Lloyd. We miss him every day. We talk about him all the time. Hi, Lloyd. I don't know where you are, but I wanted to let you know that we miss you here, miss your calm voice and demeanor. And uh, uh, it's just really, it was a difficult time. And I'm glad you missed all this craziness with the COVID. But uh, we'd like to see you here. I know it's impossible, but we miss you. Bye. Hey Lloyd. Thanks again for the visit this past Friday. What is it now, five times we've seen each other since now? Funny, since previous to that, it was only once a year in Anaheim. Anyhow, I really appreciate you popping in from time to time and let me know you're doing well. I do miss the in-person kvetching, though. It was fun remembering those National NAM days when after closing up the booth, we'd go out and toast a successful day. Laughed our asses off all night with Jerry, Scott, Baker, Nelson, and going up to Mirabelle on Sunset Strip during the LA NAM days was such a blast too. And seeing that look on your face when Letterman Sound Guy asked if we wanted to do a line check on those easy top amps. Opening Beatles chord, done. All right, man, my door is open anytime. Missing you again already. Talk later. Time. <laughs>